China, Japan, and Korea. These three East Asian nations were established from ancient times under the rule of hereditary monarchs and dynasties. For millennia, these three countries have managed to retain much of their culture and identity despite their struggles in coexisting and their occasional violent conflicts with each other. Over thousands of years, the people of these nations, as well as their leaders, have shared history, customs, traditions, and culture with one another that have outlived the dynasties they originated from. These three powerful countries were once ruled by kings and emperors with similar yet also different laws and policies, while also observing different customs and traditions. As people who live in a world that was founded and honed by these powerful dynasties, it could prove important to learn about the emperors who lived in these three old societies and learn how similar and different they were from one another. China. The Dragon Throne. The Emperor of China was the title of any monarch of Imperial China and bore the title Huangdi. He was also referred to as Tianzi or Son of Heaven as recognition of his title as the ruler of all under heaven. From the Qin Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty, there were 557 emperors in Imperial China, with the most well-known emperors being Qin Shi Huang of the Qin Dynasty, Emperors Gaozu and Wu of the Han Dynasty, Emperor Taizong of the Tang Dynasty, Kublai Khan of the Yuan Dynasty, the Hongwu Emperor of the Ming Dynasty, and the Kangxi Emperor of the Qing Dynasty. The dragon was a symbol of divine imperial power in China, and because the emperor was considered a living god, his throne was known as the Dragon Throne. Rhetorically, the Dragon Throne also refers to the head of the state and to the monarch itself. The last imperial dynasty, the Qing Dynasty, was overthrown in the 1911 Xinhai Revolution, which ended with the abdication of the six-year-old last emperor of China, Puyi, on February 12th, 1912. This also marked the end of the 2000 years of China's imperial rule and the beginning of its early republican era. Japan, the Chrysanthemum Throne. The Emperor of Japan is the head of the imperial family and is the ceremonial head of state of Japan's constitutional monarchy. In Japan, the emperor is called Tenno, which translates as Heavenly Sovereign. In the early 7th century, the emperor started to be referred to as Tenshi or Tenshi-sama, which means Son of Heaven. It is said that Japan was founded in 660 BC by Emperor Jimmu, the earliest Japanese emperor recorded in written history. The Imperial House of Japan, which is also referred to as the Yamato Dynasty, is the oldest continuing hereditary monarchy in the world, which means the imperial throne is passed down from one member of the royal family to another. According to the Nihon Shoki, or the Chronicles of Japan, the second oldest book of classical Japanese history, the 125 emperors of Japan have an unbroken male lineage for more than 2,600 years, starting with the legendary emperor Emperor Jimmu up until the current reigning Emperor Akihoto, who ascended to the throne in 1989. The throne of the Emperor of Japan is referred to as the Chrysanthemum Throne, which can refer to an actual throne used for accession ceremonies, and can also refer rhetorically to the head of state and the very institution of the Japanese monarchy itself. Korea, the Phoenix Throne. Similar to China, the land of Korea was ruled by different kingdoms and various dynasties, with each rising after the fall of another. Keep in mind that the Korean Empire itself was actually Actually very short-lived, lasting between 1897 and 1910, only 13 years. During that time, the Emperor of Korea was known as Hwangje, with the title of Imperial Majesty. The first Emperor of Korea was Gojong, or the Emperor Gwangmu, who was the 26th King of the Joseon Dynasty and the first Emperor of Korea. He proclaimed Korea to be an empire in 1897 and ruled from 1897 to 1907. The throne of the hereditary monarch of Korea is referred to in English as the Phoenix Throne. Much like the dragon throne and the chrysanthemum throne, the phoenix throne also refers rhetorically to the head of state of the Joseon dynasty and the short-lived empire of Korea, which lasted only between 1897 and 1910. The kingdom of Joseon was a Korean kingdom founded by Yi seong following the aftermath of the fall of the Goryeo dynasty, having lasted for approximately five centuries from July 1392 until October 1897. Joseon was the last dynasty of Korea and its longest ruling Confucian dynasty. During its reign, the Joseon dynasty encouraged the incorporation of Chinese Confucian ideals and doctrines into Korean society and was known as the Hermit Kingdom because it had an increasingly harsh isolationist policy after the Japanese and Manchu invasions during the late 16th and early 17th centuries. In the late 19th century, the dynasty declined due to internal strife, power struggles, international pressure, and rebellions in the peninsula. The Joseon dynasty had 27 monarchs that ruled over a united Korean peninsula for 500 years before the Japanese 
Empire annexed Korea and was eventually divided into two distinct sovereign states, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, also known as North Korea, and the Republic of Korea, or South Korea, the powers and functions of the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean monarchies. As the supposed ruler of all under heaven, the emperors of China, in theory, held supreme power in the country, and their words were to be obeyed immediately. But in reality, the power of the emperor varied between different emperors and different dynasties. Some emperors were absolute rulers, while others were merely figureheads as the actual political power was wielded by court factions, eunuchs, the bureaucracy, or the noble families. Also, Chinese emperors are only mortals mandated by heaven to rule, even though they were called sons of heaven. They were given the mandate of heaven, a concept created by the monarchs of the Zhou dynasty, to justify the deposing of the Shang dynasty. When an emperor lost the mandate of heaven, it meant that he lacked the virtue to fulfill his obligations as a ruler. Because of such a mandate, there were people over the centuries who founded their own empires and overthrew the existing emperor at the time by misusing the concept of the mandate of heaven. In Japan, the powers and functions of the emperor had historically alternated between an actual imperial ruler and that of a ceremonial symbolic role. The emperor was revered by the people as the embodiment of divine harmony rather than as leader of a governing body. From 1192 to 1867, the sovereignty of the state was exercised by the shogunate, which left the emperors of Japan with very little political power. Though the shoguns had to be officially recognized by the emperors, since they were still the source of sovereignty, the emperors could not use their powers separately from the operations of the shogunate. Hence, emperors would sometimes come into conflict with the reigning shogun, which led to power struggles between the imperial court and the military governments of Japan. Where are the samurai when you need them? Under the current constitution of Japan, the emperor is the symbol of the state and of the unity of the people. In present times, however, the emperor's powers are limited only to important ceremonial functions, with the government's executive power explicitly vested in the cabinet, of which the prime minister is a leader who is formally appointed by the emperor. In Korea, similar once again with China, the king had absolute authority, though his actual power varied depending on the political circumstances of his reign. While the king commanded absolute loyalty from his officials and his subjects, the officials were also expected to guide the king to take the right path in times his judgment might be mistaken. And for more than 2,000 years, Korean monarchies were also compelled to pledge loyalty and allegiance to the emperors of China. For example, the Ming Dynasty of China had a close trade and diplomatic relationship with the Joseon Dynasty of Korea, but the Korean Dynasty had to sever its relations with the Falling Dynasty when the Qing Dynasty invaded the Korean Peninsula and forced King Injo of Joseon into submission. The imperial family of China was made up of the emperor and the empress, who served as the primary consort as well as the mother of the nation. Aside from the empress, the emperor would typically take other cohorts and concubines who were ranked by importance into a harem in which the empress reigned supreme. Every dynasty had their own set of rules when it comes to the numerical composition of the harem. For example, during the Qing dynasty, the imperial convention dictated that there should always be one empress, one imperial court consort, one imperial noble consort, two noble consorts, four consorts, six imperial concubines, and an unlimited number of other consorts and concubines. Although the emperor possessed the highest status by law, the mother of the emperor, also known as the Empress Dowager, received the greatest respect in the palace and was usually the primary decision maker in most family affairs. There were also instances that the Empress Dowager served as the de facto ruler when the reigning emperor on the throne was too young to rule on his own. In imperial China, the title of emperor was hereditary, with the eldest son born to the empress succeeding the throne. On instances that the empress did not bear any children, the emperor would appoint a child from one of his many consorts. The emperors could also choose to elevate another more favored child or the child of a favored concubine to the status of crown prince. However, because of frequent rivalries and disputes over succession, the Qing dynasty abandoned the practice of appointing a crown prince altogether. Since then, the identity of the designated heir was kept a secret until after the emperor's death. The imperial house of Japan Japan, on the other hand, is comprised of the members of the extended family of the reigning emperor of Japan, who fulfill official as well as public duties. Currently, there are less than 20 members of the Japanese imperial family, and while they are mandated to perform ceremonial and social duties, they have no role in government affairs. In the past, the Japanese imperial dynasty consistently practiced official polygamy. The emperor could take several concubines of varying hierarchical degree. It was also an old tradition to marry between dynasty members, as such unions were deemed advantageous in preserving the pure 
purity of the imperial blood. Japanese monarchs also used marriage as a way to forge alliances with powerful families. In the Meiji era, suitable brides for the emperor and the crown prince were only limited to the daughters of the Seke, the five main branches of the higher Fujiwara clan, and to the daughters of the imperial clan itself. Historically, the succession of the chrysanthemum throne has always been passed on to the descendants in the male line of the imperial lineage, although there had also been nine reigning monarchs who were female. However, enthronements of female monarchs were often just a stopgap measure in case no suitable male was available to ascend to the throne, or when there was an ongoing conflict among the rivaling imperial branches. In the Korean peninsula, the House of Yi was the household of Joseon and the Korean Empire. While the king essentially held absolute power, the Queen Dowager, which is usually the mother of the current king, was also placed in high regard. In fact, there were instances throughout the Joseon dynasty that the Queen Dowager took the role of the acting monarch when the king was too young to rule. Like Chinese and Japanese monarchs, Korean kings also used marriage as a way to forge alliances with powerful families. And aside from the queen, the king would typically take other consorts and concubines who were ranked by importance. Similar to the imperial China, the title of king in the Joseon dynasty was hereditary, with the phoenix throne traditionally passed on from father to son. The convention was to have the eldest son born to the queen succeed to the throne, though there were many instances that the king appointed a son from a consort instead as the crown prince. The long development of these East Asian nations since the ancient times has not only expanded their populations, it also refined their respective cultures. Although the monarchies of China and Korea are no longer in existence, these nations' ethical and spiritual cultures, along with the enduring empire of Japan, are all influenced by their shared Confucian and Buddhist values, which continue to benefit humanity today. These values are universal and apply to all humanity. Such values include integrity or honesty, compassion for others, and resisting temptations of worldly desire. So as empires may rise and fall, these values endure the ages. And now the current descendants of these powerful empires today continue to display the degree of wisdom and sensitivity that can only be learned from these old Asian cultures. So to pass the tests of time, align your hearts with these ancient values rather than accumulating material wealth. If you'd like to learn more about ancient cultures and ancient history, check out our other videos or hit the subscribe button below.